If your music lacks dynamics, movement, life and generally excitement, or if you get stuck in an 8 bar loop and don't know how to finish your track, this video is for you. Automation is one tool that every single professional music producer knows how to get the most from. So in this video we are going to cover what automation is and how to use it, the three most commonly automated parameters, and some of my favourite advanced automation tricks that's really going to get your music sounding professional. Make sure you stick around to the end though because the real power comes when we apply all of these techniques together. This video was requested by you you guys a couple of weeks ago so keep the comments coming i love to see what you want help with and as often as i can i try to make those videos okay without further ado let's hop into the door and get it done Okay, so first things first, let's look at the basic automation controls because it's going to make everything else much easier. Now, if you're using Ableton, this little button here is going to allow you to see your automation lanes or you can press A as a shortcut. And when you have it turned off, it doesn't delete the automation, it just hides it from sight. And if you're using any door, this is going to be very similar and these controls will be similar. Okay, so we can see here, we've got this automation lane. It's showing us which one it is for, what parameter it's controlling rather. It's controlling the mixer track track volume at the moment. So if we just click on that to create a node, take it down and then press play, we're going to see this track volume move automatically like magic and that is automation. Now, that's the main thing to consider. You can automate multiple parameters simultaneously and that's where the real power lies. For instance, if we right click here and press show automation in new lane, we can now create a track pan automation as well that's gonna operate simultaneously with that volume automation. So let's just do that and have a look. And I want to see the volume automation as well. So I can right click on that and press show automation in new lane. And now we can see both happening at the same time. And this lane here is just showing the track volume as well. So we can hear the panning is being automated as well as the volume. Next thing to note is that in Ableton, if you roll over these lines, you can move the whole thing at once like that. You can see this blue bit. And if you roll over it and hold option, you can change that straight line into a curve, which is very cool. And we're gonna be seeing how we can use that later as well. Last thing I really want to touch upon here is that you can copy and duplicate these track automations. And if you have this little fella selected here, that means that if you are copying your MIDI clip, it's not going to copy the automation as well, see? But if we have it turned off, so it, automation is not locked, we can copy the automation and the MIDI information at the same time. And again, we're gonna see why that's very useful in a few minutes. Now, if you prefer the more hands-on approach and you've got a controller like the Push 2 or a keyboard as I have, you don't need to program in by clicking the mouse your automation. You can actually assign any of the controls within your door to one of the MIDI controls on your controller. So, and then you can record that into Ableton as well, which can sometimes render a more natural feeling and a bit more spontaneity. So let's try that now. So we've got our main riff here and it sounds like this. And we want to automate this filter here. So what I'm going to do is right click on it, I'm going to edit MIDI map and then I'm just going to move one of the knobs on my controller and it's been assigned to that parameter. So now we can close that MIDI mapping like so and now we've got control directly over that filter cutoff. So it sounds like this. Cool. And the way to record this in is make sure that the MIDI track is armed like so. Be sure to hit the overdub button right here because if you don't and we start recording, we're going to record over those MIDI notes as well. We don't want that. We want them to remain and just to record the automation. And then you simply hit record. And, and now if we stop and then hit A to show automation, we can see the work that we've just done. And of course, if you want to tweak it, you can go in and move the particular nodes that you want to tweak. But that's another and quite fun way that you can use automation. So that's pretty much it, the basics of automation. And you can automate pretty much any parameter in most doors. So hopefully you can already see how it's very powerful for creating movement and interest. Now I could spend hours showing you every permutation of every automation possible of every parameter, but it would be completely pointless and well boring, a bit like the last Matrix movie. So I'm gonna show you the most 
used and most powerful automation parameters that are going to make the biggest impact on your music. So the first of which we just touched upon it is volume automation. Now I kind of threw a red herring there because I showed volume automation on the mixer channel, but I recommend to never do that. I always recommend to my accelerator students never do that because when you want to tweak the mix afterwards, you have to then edit all of those automation nodes. So the thing to do if you want to aut automate automate volume is throw on a gain plugin or a trim plugin. There's one in every single door and in Ableton it's called utility. Then you can right click, show automation in new lane and that's where you want to do your volume automation. So if we listen to this little bit, there's a string, a high string that comes in in this track. So let's just have a quick listen. Add some tension, but it comes in quite abruptly. So if we just automate some volume, we can click here. So the maximum volume is going to be zero dB, which is exactly what we want. I'm just going to notch the beginning and take it down. So we can start at any volume that we want, but let's just slowly introduce this string. So you can't hear it yet. You can see here, slowly getting louder. So now it's at full volume when we get to this next part. So that's volume automation, very simple, very powerful. Okay, next most common automation parameter is the EQ or the frequencies. There are two that are particularly common and particularly useful, so let's have a look at both of them. The first is the low cut frequency filter. So if we listen to our bass here, we can hear it's hitting all these bass notes here. So if we automate this frequency up at the bottom, so we're going to start cutting out some of those low frequencies. We get this kind of effect. Now this is particularly useful if you've got a macro automation where you're leading into a break or you've got a big build up and you want to take away some of that low end energy so when the drop hits you've got more impact because the contrast is bigger. Now the opposite of the low cut is the high cut and you can use these two simultaneously if you like. So let's take out some of those high frequencies doing the same thing but in reverse. Now that's particularly good on drums and I'm going to show you that in a couple of minutes, but both together those things just allow you to control the energy levels of your track, especially when you combine it with the volume automation. So as promised, I'm going to show you that technique with drums and I'm going to show you what to watch out for. Hmm, what a delicious coffee from that amazing coffee mug. Right, so with our drums like that, we can create a similar filter sweep and we can automate those high frequencies out and it's going to create a really cool effect that's perfect for leading into breaks and builds. So let's just automate out those high frequencies like this. Gives you that really filtered house effect. Now you can make this more interesting by increasing the Q value and you can actually automate the Q value on as well. So it's going to give it a harsher, more resonant sound. And this is what you want to watch out for because it increases the volume when you hit those resonant peaks. So you might want to have, see it sounds cool, like a DJ filter. But you can get some really high resonant peaks there. So you might want to try a compressor after that just to rein in any super high volumes. Okay, so now we've put the compressor on and bumped up the Q value, we should start to see this work when we hit some of those really high peaks. And that's just going to keep everything a bit more under control. Now I want to touch upon something because it's not just within EQs and auto filters that we can create these filter sweeps. You can actually do it within the synths itself. We heard that a little bit on the baseline earlier, but if we look at our main synth riff here and listen, we can hear, we can hear these high frequencies appearing. And let's have a quick look on this spectrum analyzer and see what the frequency spread looks like as this filter opens up. So we're going to start with low frequencies. And as that filter opens up, watch what happens here. We get more high frequencies. And all that I've done in this instance is selected the frequency control on the synth itself, show automation in new lane, and then I control it with automation.
Without doubt, the next most powerful and widely used parameter that you can automate is pitch. And I want to show you two examples of that, a micro pitch automation and a macro pitch automation, which is going to help with your arrangement. So first, let's listen to our bass. It's just hitting one note. It's got an interesting side chain rhythm, which is cool. But now let's add some pitch bend. So within this analog, I'm actually going to choose the pitch bend range. It defaults to two semitones, but I've chosen 12, which is basically a full octave. So let's go into the MIDI clip itself and start automating this pitch a little bit. So if we choose MIDI control in the envelope section, choose pitch bend, let's see what happens or listen to what happens when we start adding some interesting pitch bend. Let's just make this note go up. So we're already getting a bit more movement and interest in our bass line. And now let's make this pitch sweep back down to the root note and let's have a listen now. So that's cool. And once we've got that little pitch bend riff, we can grab that and just duplicate it. So that automation is now repeated. Fantastico. Okay, let's look at that macro pitch bend. So down here, we've got a riser. And again, I'm using a synth from Ableton, but it doesn't matter which synth you use, as long as you can change the pitch bend range. Again, I'm putting this up to 12, although in Serum, you can do it up to 24, which is even better. That's two octaves. So let's go into this clip. And I'm just going to write in one prolonged note on the root note of the track, and this track's in F minor. So let's do that. And at the moment, it just sounds like this. Just one long sustained note. So if we go in and do a pitch bend in the exact same way, like so, we are going to take that note down. So it's being pitched down one octave or 12 semitones. And we are going to take it up to being pitched plus 12. So this is now two octaves worth of pitch bend and we get this effect as you'd expect. So in the mix. We've got our riser. And you would have heard that in pretty much any genre of dance music. Now I do have one more pitch automation trick that I want to show you. So if we go to our drum intro like this, our snare roll. We can add some more interest and dynamics to that snare roll by bending the pitch, basically. So I'm going to select sampler instead of simpler because then I can edit the pitch range. I'll edit it to about eight. It doesn't have to be whole octaves. I mean, we can experiment. I'm going to go in there, select envelopes, choose MIDI control pitch bend, and then we're just going to pitch bend it as we get to the end of that build. And you can accelerate that too, especially if we use A bit of a right said Fred moment there. So there are three ways in which you can automate pitch. So we've covered automation on the channel itself, within the instruments and within the effects. So now let's take it one step further and look at automation on the group level. Now in Ableton, when you group tracks together, it puts all of those audio inputs through one bus. So you can process them as one signal. So we've got our shuffle track here. We've got our snares, we've got our drum machine, and we've got our kick. And now they're all going into this drum bus. And if we solo them all together, we can hear them all together. This is fantastic when it comes to automation, though, because we can add some real movement to our track. So let's try and use that filter automation we looked at earlier on the bus level and just take out that low end as we move into the build of the break. So let's turn some of these effects on as well and just have a listen to what happens. And if you do that across several instruments, so we could do that with the bass as well, then you're going to have several elements in your track working towards the same goal. So let's just program that in. Here we go. We'll take that frequency out there. And then we're going to copy that over to our bass channel as well. And we'll also copy it over to our synth riff. So now we've got three main elements of our track with those low frequencies being automated out at this point. 
and the riser. Perfect way to work into a break, which leads me on to the next most powerful automation technique, and that is automating reverb. Now, usually people think of reverb as something you just put on your track or you put on an instrument to create some space, but you can also use it to create extra movement and dynamics in your track. So for example, when we move into this break, although it's sounding better than it did, it's still quite an abrupt change. Now, we can automate some reverb here. We can either do it on the separate tracks itself or we could do it on the master channel, which I'm gonna do just to show you the effect that it's going to have. So now we've got a reverb on our master channel. We can push the decay up, but I've got this to 100% dry. But listen to what happens as I put it on. It just blurs those lines between the different sections of the track. Now, personally, I prefer to use this on the separate channels and the groups rather than the master bus, but I wanted to give you a quick example of the kind of effect that it creates. So I'm gonna combine two notions now. We're gonna use reverb automation, but we're also gonna use send automation. And this is when you automate the send controls to send, obviously, the audio to an auxiliary channel or a send or return channel. They mean the same thing. And what we want to do is create another auxiliary channel and I'm just gonna do that like so. I'm gonna call that drum wash for reverb wash, and we're gonna put a reverb on that auxiliary channel. Now, what we're trying to do here is send some of the drums to that auxiliary channel so we can create that reverb wash out while still hearing the dry drums. And I'll give you an example of the two different techniques. So if we have a reverb on the drum track itself or the drum group itself, as we increase that dry wet control like so, It softens the drums because we can't hear the dry signal anymore. Now, of course, sometimes you might want that if you want to soften the transients and push them back in the mix, but I want to show you what happens if we automate the send control instead. So we've got our drum bus here. We can see that our drum wash channel is C. So we're just gonna automate this send control like so. And we are going to do a couple of nodes and then increase that drum wash as we near that break. So what's gonna happen now is that we're gonna still hear our dry drums at full volume, but we're also gonna hear the drum wash behind that. And that gives you extra control because we can now process that drum wash separately. You know, we could put an EQ on there. We could have an auto pan going. There's so much we could choose to do. And it creates tombral cohesion. So rather than using a white noise sweep, our track is based on some of these core sounds that we're reusing in different ways. And that's really important for creating a cohesive sound across your whole track. But fear not, because send automation doesn't end there with reverb washes. The most powerful way you can use it, in my opinion, is to use it for incidental delays, especially with vocals. So now let's have a look at that and hear what it sounds like. For the break, I found a vocal, a female vocal, that sounds like this with no effects on it because it's already got some reverb and delay baked into the stem. A nice rich sound with everything else. And then it stops for the beats to come in. But we want to just choose which syllables of that vocal or which part of that vocal to send out to be echoed and repeated. And this is such an important tool when it comes to working with vocals in music production. I call it an incidental delay. So what we've done is created an auxiliary channel here, put a delay unit on it, uh, an echo in Ableton, set it to 100% wet because it's on an auxiliary channel. We don't want that double, we don't want that dry signal, sorry, doubled up. And then I've just added sidechain compression after it so it can start bouncing with the beats when the beats come in. So to automate the send, we are gonna make sure that we choose the right one, which is A, B, C, D. So here that's A, B, C, D. Right click, auto show automation in new lane. And then we are just gonna choose this part here to send out to the delay. So let's send it right up and then we're gonna turn it down so only this section is being sent to that delay. Let's hear what that sounds like, especially with the delay we put 
to a, a long feedback so it should carry on well into those beats. And now, so we can hear that delay now of the vocal. Now this is perfect if you've got certain phrases within your track that you want to accentuate and have echo on longer, and then you can control those echoes as their completely own instrument. So I could put a reverb on here, I could put an EQ on here, but if you are gonna be using these long feedbacks, don't forget, you can also automate the effect that are on the sends channels as well. For instance, if I want that delay to die out, I'm gonna to have to automate that feedback to go down. So here we go what you could do is something like this. So now let's listen to that. And it's gonna start fading out before this bar. So I want that continuing, and I've just decided for whatever reason, I want it to fade out now. So I've automated that feedback there. Okay, now we understand most of the fundamentals of automation. I wanna get really in depth with some of the more advanced techniques, but before I do, let me know if you're enjoying this so far. Give me a hell yeah or an amen brother if you're feeling holy and let me know in the comments, what do you wanna see me cover on this channel? Okay, let's continue. So one of the main riffs of this track, which is based on Boris Brace's track, I can't remember what it's called now, but he gave it a like when I did my tutorial on it. Uh, one of the main features is this synth riff which has got a lot of movement. Now we've already looked at the filter automation, but there are some other things going on here as well. So let's look at them one by one. First, the easiest thing to point out is the auto pan. LFOs are a type of automation, just more automatic actually, but obviously you're not then having to program in the different values, you're just dialing it in with an LFO that will keep repeating that automation. But with the auto pan, we're just gonna have it panning left and right, which is gonna create some more movement straight away. Then we've got an EQ with no automation on it, that's fine. Then we've got a delay, and this is where things get really interesting. So you can see here, we've got the dry wet control. Clicking on it will show us what's going on with this automation. Now this is a ping pong delay. So I've got the left side and the right side set slightly at different times, and that's gonna create what's known as the Haas effect, but, when you automate it, it creates some really interesting stereo effects. So let's have a listen. Now you can couple that with automating other parts of this too. So we could try automating the time, for example, of one of the sides, like so. And then we could automate the other side to be different. And what this allows is for dynamic changes in a sound throughout the course of a track. So whilst the synth riff on its own is just one note being hit pretty much, or two notes anyway, all of the interest and the movement in this sound comes from this automation and these LFOs. So now let's have a listen to it and see what happens. I'm also gonna automate this feedback. So let's just kind of put it up and then put it down, see what happens. This is an experiment. I don't know how it's gonna sound yet. So there's so many possibilities when it comes to automating these different parameters and delay for me is a personal favorite because it creates this interesting bouncing movement in the stereo field. The last thing I want to show you is a pump compressor. Again, this is just a sidechain compressor and technically it's not automation, but it is creating movement and bounce to that track. Now there's just one more technique I wanna show you before we combine everything together and hear what results we can come up with. And that is automation within automation. Now I know that sounds a bit weird, but think of it like nesting automation. So what we're gonna do is create automation within the MIDI clip itself. And then we are going to automate the mixer channel. And this allows you to have more complex automation. So if we go into our synth riff again, as an example, we can go into envelopes, we can choose which one to automate, and I'm gonna to choose to automate the frequency of the filter. So we can create this kind of effect. So the filter is changing within the MIDI clip. So we're creating this movement and we can just duplicate that, which is gonna have the exact effect that you'd expect, which is this. Filters opening up and closing down. 
But if you wanted that to open up comparatively over time, you don't want to have to go in and be editing all of this automation to, to kind of open up over time like this and then drag that down a bit so it starts off lower and then it gets kind of higher, but it's still got this bouncing movement in there and then opens up over time. That's going to take way too long. So if we leave it like this, this is when we can nest that automation within the automation on the mixer channel itself. So let's find the frequency here. I'm going to take that down and we are going to open it up like this. So now what's happening is we've got the filter kind of going up and down with movement within the clip whilst it's being brought up in general like this. So you've got this kind of effect going on. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. And we can see here what's happening. And that is a super powerful tool, especially for things like synth acid lines. Okay, so now we've got most of the basics and the advanced automation techniques under our belt. I'm gonna show you how you can use it to help arrange your music, but there's one thing I wanna touch upon just before that, and that is using macros to make this whole process much easier and quicker. So within certain synths and samplers, and within Ableton itself, you can assign multiple parameters to be controlled by one knob, and that is called a macro. So I've just dragged on this EDM tip washout which was inspired by the bass clef washout I just made some tweaks to my taste I've dragged it on it's a whole instrument rack or a whole effects rack within Ableton we can see here there are lots of effects nested in it and I've just put this on our drum bus so let's have a listen to the drum bus on its own at this point as we move into the break We've got the build up And now let's dig into what's happening within this effects rack. We've got this one control here and you can see it's controlling multiple parameters across multiple devices. And one of the benefits of this is now we only have one knob to automate. So if we automate this like so, show automation in new lane, and then we can wash it out like this. Listen to what happens and let's have a look at what happens at the same time. So it's a very quick and easy way to control about seven or eight effects without having to go and automate a bunch of different channels. A super, super powerful technique. And the way to do that in Ableton at least is to have multiple effects. And you can do this with instruments as well. It doesn't just have to be effects. Group them together by pressing Command and G or Control and G if you're using Windows. And then they're all grouped together in this one effects rack. If you press this button here, it's gonna open the macro knobs and you can choose how many you want showing. If you only want one macro knob, it makes it super simple. Just press these plus and minus buttons. Then we can press this map button here. And then all you need to do is click the parameter you want to assign to this knob, press map. So let's assign two different parameters. We'll also select this one, the frequency, map that and we'll select the dry wet control of the reverb and map that as well. And now we can see if we move that knob, all of those different controls change at the same time. Now this bit up here is really important if the map button is selected because you can change the range that this knob operates in. So sometimes that's gonna to be too extreme. Let's have a listen to what happens if we keep this at zero. You know, we don't necessarily want that happening. So for this control here, auto filter, I'm gonna go up here and I'm actually gonna switch it around so the maximum is at the top and the minimum is at the bottom. And now we've got this effect. So that's just a quick example of the power of macros and the way in which it speeds the whole process of automation up. Okay, now I want to show you how we can use automation to help with arrangement because if you're anything like me, sometimes you'll write an eight or 16 bar loop and you just get stuck at that point. Like how do I take this out to a full track? Well, there are a few techniques that you can use. My referencing a ghost track technique being one of them, but this is another way. So let's have a look at it. So we've got our main idea for our track. We've got the main groove, which is this. And we've got the B section, which is the chord progression with the melody, which sounds like this. So 
So how on earth can we make this little section of music, which is about 15 seconds, into a four or five minute track? Well, let's have a quick look at that. So I'm going to drag this B section out the way because that's just going to be used for the breaks. And I, you can actually use this whilst using the reference track ghost technique as well. But what I'm going to do is just duplicate the main groove because that's going to be the main bulk of the track. And let's say we've got it duplicating one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we go into the break, which we can have here. So really quickly, what can we do using automation to make this smooth and not just delete different sections, but actually use automation to make this sound smoother? So the first thing to do would be to delete the sections that you don't want. So we'll start without the bass. If we'll start without one of these synth riffs. So the track might start like this. But we don't want these drums just running on repeating all this time. So what we're going to do is use some automation. We are going to put a filter there and we're just going to filter out the low end of these drums for these first few bars like so. And we're going to put some reverb on there as well because this is going to get a bit boring as well. So we can just put a little reverb on there. This is going to be a washout, or you could use the EDM tips washout, of course, if you download the project below this video, completely free. But let's just add a little bit of interest as we get closer to that drop. So there we've got some interest as well. Now we'll want to introduce these synth elements gently because it's a bit abrupt otherwise. So once again, we can use our weaving skills, our automation skills. We'll introduce one of them like this with a low pass filter and we'll just bring it up over a few bars, say this amount. And this second synth riff, we're going to use a reverb washout, but in reverse. So we're going to get another reverb, stick it on there, and we're now going to use this in reverse. So we're going to start with it well washed out, 100% wet, and then we're going to do the exact opposite from what we did before, which is like this. But it's a bit loud at the beginning, so we can also combine a utility and do some volume automation as well, like this. So we want it full volume there, so we're going to start quieter, so it's just a gentle little atmosphere. And you might run this on even more. And create some more interest. Just automating up and down a little bit. whilst creating this synth riff, bring it up even more. Now, if you combine the reverb washout for this build up as well on the drums, but we're not gonna take out the low end here, we're just gonna create the reverb washout. Or we might take out a little bit of the low end leading into the break as we looked at earlier. Now this main riff is coming in too strong, so we can automate the frequency there. Let's start low down, like so. And this one we could take down, or we could take out the low end of this filter now, like so. Let's put another filter on there, switch it round. And this is just giving you a hint at some of the possibilities to create an interesting arrangement from very few elements. You don't need to be adding loads of different elements. You just can use automation to create body and life and interest to your track. And when you combine all of these different automation techniques together, your track is gonna have such life. It's gonna move and flow like an anaconda in the Amazon. <sighs> 
But of course, automation on its own isn't going to make an amateur sounding track sound professional. And after listening to literally tens of thousands of tracks over the last few years, I can safely say there are eight mistakes that you are probably making that's keeping your music sounding amateur instead of sounding professional. So I put those eight mistakes and how to avoid them into this video right here. So check that out to make sure that you're not making those mistakes too. But before you do, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and consider subscribing to my channel for music tutorials each and every week. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will catch you over at the next video.